Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again in today's video. A crazy Karen wants to sue me for being naked at a nude beach. She ends up assaulting me and calling the police. If you haven't already, please check out my podcast by searching for Ripe Stories on Spotify and you will get early access to new stories and exclusive content you won't find anywhere else. So me and my husband are nudists, though some would prefer to call themselves naturists. We basically love getting naked wherever we are and just going about our day in the nude. When we get up in the morning, we generally go about our morning in the nude and when we get home from work, we generally strip down to our undies at the very most and chill. We'll go out on the weekend specifically to places where we can strip naked and bathe in the sun. We live in a pretty toasty part of the country, so we can be naked all year round without having to worry about about frostbite on anything. The rest of the family are quite embarrassed by our love of nudity, but for the most part they don't bother us about it. Our daughter has never been one for open nudity, so when me and the hubby strip off, she will generally wander off to somewhere else. The one thing we have never done though is to go to a nudist beach. We don't live that close to the coast, so the opportunity never came up until we decided to go away for our anniversary. We specifically chose a location with a nudist beach on it. The place we chose was nice and quiet and for the most part, the beach was practically empty if not populated by another couple or two. I could not understand why the beach was so empty all the time as it was a lovely spot to bathe in the water and in the sun. The only off-putting part about it was the line of stones near the back of the beach you had to pick your way across. After the first day, these stones were easily circumvented by simply wearing shoes and then just getting naked at the beach. It was a thrilling experience, if not for the sand getting absolutely everywhere. I can see why Anakin Skywalker was not a fan, he must have been a nudist too. We met a few wonderful people and even had a little barbecue party on the beach with some other couples who were locals. It was a great holiday, but I would not be telling this story here if the holiday went off without any trouble. Inevitably, ignorant Karen would inevitably decide to make her presence known and ruin everyone's day. It was about mid-morning when we went to the beach for the third or fourth time during our holiday. We liked to go in the morning because the beach was at its quietest and me and the hubby could spend some quality time walking the shore, splashing in the ocean and whatnot. It was very romantic and intimate, so we get to the beach, lay out our towels, put up the parasol and wind break and we are ready to get nude and enjoy ourselves as nature intended when we heard the crunch of the stones. Expecting to see one of the other couples we had made friends with, instead we see a rather round figure waddling onto the beach and in a shrill voice she says, Oh it's nice here, I wonder why it's so empty. Karen had arrived and immediately made her presence known for all to hear. She had come with some of her family, her daughter about 19 and younger son of about 15. The kids seemed a little more down to earth than their mother. I was curious about them at first, sure, after years of being naturists we have seen plenty of families that like to get naked together, our daughter might not be for it, but there are plenty out there that are. So we think nothing of it at first and start stripping off. Karen perches herself just a little way down the beach from us and they start laying out all their stuff. My husband strips off and heads to the water for a swim and that is when I notice Karen staring. Rule number one of being a naturist, you don't stare and she was staring up a storm. I started to get a little irritated after about 5 minutes of her staring after my husband and glaring at me as I'm removing my clothes. By the time I came to unfasten my bra, she is stomping across the sand to me, face as bright traffic light red. Hey you! She shouts very rudely at me. You cannot be naked in public. I am confused, get worried that we have wandered onto the wrong beach but could see the signs very clearly by the sand bar and I would recognize the steps coming down onto the pebbles anywhere. So I calmly point out to Karen that she is in fact on a nudist beach and if she didn't like people getting naked in public, she might want to leave before things got a little busy during the afternoon. Sure, it would only be another two or three couples but if she was fuming at just me, could you imagine six more other nudists on the beach, she would probably explode. She is not listening to a word I am saying though and is just ranting that being naked in public is against the law and if I didn't put my bra back on and get my husband to put some trunks on, she was gonna call the cops and sue me for being naked. I do my best to remain cool, I've had to put up with these kinds of people all the time, people so prudish that they think any display of skin is sinful or wrong or something. They always try to take the moral high ground but all they really do is prove how snobbish they are from their high horse. 
Karen is ranting about me, about how her kids don't need to see a man's sweaty, saggy, hairy bits flopping all over the place and that no one wants to have saggy boobies flapping in their face. Firstly, rude. And secondly, her kids didn't seem to mind or even care in the slightest. The fact was they both looked more embarrassed by her childish behavior than my desire to express my freedom by being naked in a legally designated nudist area. I point this out to her and she slaps me, storms off and saying she's gonna call the cops on me. In an act of revenge I get fully naked, taking my undies off too and start building sandcastles, making sure that Karen has a full view of my butt as I bend over. About half an hour or so, the police do in fact show up and as soon as they arrive, Karen is flagging them down and ranting until she is bright red in the face. I wrap a towel around me to make the officers more comfortable when they speak to me about what had happened. I tell them and Karen goes off again when the police say that I was doing nothing wrong and if she did not like it she needed to find another less nudist beach. I can't remember exactly what happens, events were a sudden blur, but I remember saying something about Karen needing to loosen up and not be such a prude or learn to read signs or something when smack. She slaps me again in full view of the cops who were quick to escort her from the beach and to the station to cool off. They asked me if I wanted to press charges, to which I definitely agreed. Some time later, Karen had to go before the judge. Even though it was a pretty minor assault, slapping someone is still against the law. Karen tried to defend herself by saying, I provoked her by being naked. But the judge was not having any of it. He said that I was legally allowed to be naked on the nudist beach and that was no excuse for violence. The judge sentenced Karen to one year of probation. She also had to pay a 500 bucks fine, attend anger management classes and write a letter of apology to me. Karen was furious about the sentence. She caused a huge scene in court yelling about how unfair it was. The judge threatened to hold her in contempt if she didn't settle down. After court, Karen's kids apologized to me for their mom's behavior. They were so embarrassed by the whole thing. I could tell they just wanted it to all go away. I felt bad for them having such an intolerant mom. And here, ripe stars, I cannot even put in words how stupid you have to be to go to a nudist beach and then get upset by seeing naked people. Classic Karen situation, I guess. Either way, if you enjoyed this story, I would very much appreciate it if you could like the video, post a comment and maybe even subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That would help me tremendously. Thank you so much. The next one is titled Flight Revenge. Yesterday I was on a flight from Charlotte, North Carolina to Phoenix, Arizona, which is in the US for y'all. I'm disabled, back issues don't really matter for the context, but that's why I'm right up front. So I'm in the front row and most airlines the front row is first class, but this particular airline does not have seating arrangements, it's all about the number on your boarding pass. The first bin is for those of us in the front rows to put our purse or backpacks because we cannot put them under the seat in front of us. So this woman gets on pretty close to last and starts shoving her stuff on top of everyone else's things in the first bin even though it is full. Mind you, there's plenty of room in the bin right behind the first one. Me is me and title passenger is EP. Me, ma'am, you are shoving your purse into my backpack and my iPad is in there, as are my headphones. Could you please stop this? EP, well, shouldn't you have your stuff in there? Why aren't you holding them? Me, because we are not allowed to have them in our lap until after we take off. They already announced it. There's plenty of room for your purse and bag in the bin right behind you. EP, um, no, I don't want my bag way back there. Me, it's literally right next to that one and you wouldn't have your crap all over my backpack. EP, nope, not moving it. Cue my pettiness. As soon as we took off, I made sure to get up and get my headphones. Me, here you go ma'am, can you hold your purse while I get my headphones? Me, excuse me ma'am, can you hold your purse while I get my iPad? Me, excuse me ma'am, can you hold your purse while I get my lip gloss? Me, excuse me ma'am, can you hold your purse while I put my headphones away and get my earbuds? I made about 10 trips getting into my backpack just to annoy her because she refused to be a decent person. She was giving me the stink eye after about a third time, but I did not care. So you don't care about being a decent person and I don't care about you having a nice flight. All of the passengers around me caught on to what I was doing pretty quickly and giggled every single time I unbuckled my seatbelt. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Hopefully this will teach this woman not to be such a jerk, but I doubt it. And here ripe stars, annoying people on airplanes are really the worst, especially if you fly long distances. It can be an absolute nightmare. 
Either way, the next story is titled Army Revenge. So I was a Navy enlisted service member and was stationed in Yokosuka, Japan for a few years before I got transferred back stateside. I worked in the main hospital that cared for service members and their beneficiaries. It's a small hospital, so everyone knows everyone. Shortly after I left, I caught wind of a new physician officer working in the radiology department. My friends would say he is horrible to work with, but that's nothing new. However, someone saw him print a letter and he left it on his desk and took a picture of it and sent it to me. He's requesting to move from enlisted housing to officer. Edit, found out it's not a private letter, he did actually send it to housing and most of housing is ran by enlisted members. For context, military housing is available for those who are married, have a family or are qualified based on their rank and depending on the military base itself. Typically though, officer housing is much nicer than the enlisted. In Yokosuka, housing is basically the same all around because it is overseas. But most of the housing are apartments and each apartment complex is called a tower. Example, Fuji Tower, there are 9 towers and 2 are for officers since enlisted members outnumber officers by a lot. Now, one thing about the military, crap happens. When getting stationed, it's the active duty member's responsibility to either apply for housing on or off base before arriving, depending on what is allowed. If there's limited space and you don't apply for housing on time, then you get put where there is space. So our new officer got placed in an enlisted tower. Mind you, enlisted members have families of their own and other officers have been placed in enlisted housing before without an issue. And here are some quotes in his letter. And yes, this guy has a PhD. I have many valid objections to living in a building of almost all enlisted and even many lower enlisted being an officer. Also, there is a lot of crime, violent actions, drug use and alcoholism that happens in the enlisted housing. There are also sexual assaults and other perverts. I got a good looking family, a wife and two daughters aged 3 and 4. They are prime targets to be victims for these enlisted deviant activities. My family should be safe in housing that is with officers. Officers are much more respectable and these types of deviant activities are incredible rare compared to the deviant activities of enlisted being commonplace. Other officer families will not want to visit us because our family lives on enlisted housing. My children need to make friends with other officer children. My wife needs to make friends with other officer wives. I need to make friends with other officers. Forcing an officer to live in a large apartment building with almost all enlisted is unethical. You get the idea. So basically this guy looks down on all enlisted service members assuming every single one are drug users, perverts, pedos, criminals etc. The kicker though, he was an enlisted army member before going to officer school. In civilian terms, think of a manager that discriminates and calls all of his subordinates criminals, violent alcoholics, perfs, drug users etc. based on your job position. Forgetting that some have a family and, you know, maybe are not any of those things. And he not only has the authority to ruin your work life, he can ruin your personal life, deny days off, make you stay late, write you up if he doesn't like you and not letting you promote. It's safe to say, everyone was pissed and I have nothing to lose. I was separating soon and figured that I would have some fun before I get out. I created a burner Facebook account and posted the letter and the officer's picture on a popular military enlisted group page. Within two days, it spread like wildfire, but I was not done yet. The military has something called challenge coins, think of trading cards but custom coins that come in many shapes and sizes. Well, I designed one with his face and a big middle finger in the back. On top of that, I designed stickers to show how proud us deviants are. Other coin designs came from other people as well, but so far I think mine was the most popular. I sold over 70 coins to the initial person who originally sent me the picture at a huge discounted price so she can sell them for a profit for herself. The officer's face is now everywhere because most people keep their coins displayed on their desk. No matter where the officer went at work, he would see his face on someone's desk and since it didn't have his name on the coin, cannot officially say it is him. I sold more stateside and even got some sent to Europe. I made about $3000 overall which was nice and the story even got featured on the online naval newspaper and on two popular YouTube channels. And if you are military, you know the only time big military care is when it's too big to sweep under the rug. This story got the officer sent up to Captain's Mast, which is like Navy Court. He tried to say his wife was the one that wrote the letter, but no one is buying it because her writing style is way worse. She even tried to take the fall, but no one believed her. They both ended up deleting all social media and due to this he got served three UCMJ articles, which basically are his offenses. However, there's even more. When 
you're in the military, you have a deadline on how long you can be a certain rank. Basically, if you don't pick up, then you're kicked out. And because he is new and got served UCMJ articles, he won't be up for promotion and therefore was involuntarily separated. Also, the officer program he went through pays for his PhD. When the military pays for your PhD, you have to serve 10 years to pay them back. If you don't complete 10 years, you have to pay the military back with money instead of time. So basically, he lost his job and now has to pay back the military for his PhD. And since it takes a while for the paperwork to have him and his family sent back stateside, you can bet he socially suffered because no one worked with him. And here, ripe stars, that is exactly why you should never look down on others. I would say that guy definitely got what he deserved. Let me know in the comments what you think. Either way, the next one is an Am I the A-hole story. My husband and I, both 33, have been together since college. Over the years, he has had quite the career trajectory. He is a quant PM and makes like 10 times what I make and I make a good salary. As we have grown wealthier, I have learned that people become nosier, friends, acquaintances, relatives, you name it. In the beginning, I would entertain the nosy questions, but since I turned 30, I've adopted a take no crap attitude. When people ask me how much he makes, I no longer say anything. I've learned the hard way that giving an exact number can have bad consequences. My co-worker, 25, is new and she has already quite the reputation. She is very chatty, catty, gossipy, you get the gist. You can just tell she craves wealth and status. She wears a bunch of flashy designer items and is always asking the ladies around the office which of the men are single. Last Friday, our office hosted an afternoon happy hour. She approached me and asked me how my husband's recent vacation to Europe went. I told her it went well and briefly summarized what we did. Then the conversation went something like this. Her, so what does your husband do? Me, he works in finance. Her, oh wow, he must make a ton then to be taking you on all these lavish vacations. I hope you don't mind me asking, but how much does he make in a year? Me, yes, we are very lucky that he makes a good salary. Polite smile, her, oh come on, I won't tell anyone, how much does he make in a year, millions? Me, awkward chuckle, I would rather not say, but it's up there. Her, what, doesn't he allow you to give an exact number or something? Me, visibly annoyed, no, I just prefer not to say. Her, laughs in my face, you would think the stuck up one would be the one with money, not the one without. Me, you should learn how to take no for an answer and when to quit being a nosy witch. It's a valuable lesson. Then I smiled at her and walked away. Later on, I heard a few co-workers reach out to me and say that she was crying and left early and that I should apologize for calling her a rude name. But I refused. I told my mom and she said I was too rude to the new girl and that she is young and might not fully understand salary talk. I think she is old enough though. Husband is fully on my side but said maybe I should fake apologize for the sake of office politics which I somewhat agree with. But still, Reddit, am I the a-hole? Comment number one said, I know women like her, the type to find out it's millions and then start sleezing all over your husband. Not the a-hole. Comment number two, not the a-hole though I agree that she is young and it was harsh. And I agree that for the sake of office politics, you should say something like, I apologize for calling you a witch, but I do hope it's a valuable lesson for you and next time you're able to recognize other people's boundaries when they draw them. And here, yeah, ripe stars, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Personally, I would also say that you should never really discuss salaries or anything money related in the office at your job. That always leads to bad outcomes. And the next one is titled, IRS Revenge on the Landlord. I found this guy on Craigslist a few years ago. I like renting condos from private owners as opposed to renting apartments. Typically by renting a condo, it is safer, you have more caring residents, you get to have a luxury apartment style home with all the amenities and you can negotiate pricing etc. I am an excellent tenant and anyone who I have rented from will tell you that. I paid a $1000 deposit to move into this guy's condo, I was on a year lease. He lives in another state but we were on the same time zone. On month 8 of my lease I came home to a door that would not open. I could not get the door unlocked. I had two keys on me, as much as I tried to turn them I could not. One of the keys even broke in the lock. I waited two hours, I called, texted and emailed my landlord and he didn't pick up. I thought maybe he had someone to change the locks for some reason. I honestly did not know what to think and had no one to help me. 
The lady who lived across from me saw me in this stress as she was going into her apartment. I had never seen her but she asked me if I was okay and I explained to her that I could not get into the apartment. She told me that she knows an on-call locksmith. She gives me his number. I tell her thanks and reach out to my landlord a few more times. No response. I had no choice but to call the locksmith plus I had to really pee. The locksmith arrives and could not get the door unlocked with my key. He says he can replace the lock for like $100. I told him I was renting a condo and could not get in touch with the owner and did not know when would be the next time I could get in touch with him. After he took the lock off he told me it was faulty. So he replaced the lock. I told the landlord this via email and text and voicemail and told him that I could send him copies of the keys if he wanted. Okay, so fast forward to the end of my lease. I demand that he does a walkthrough with me, he said he wouldn't. I told him that if he didn't do a walkthrough, I would be notifying the condo office as he did not have permission to sublease by the association. He then had a friend to serve as his proxy to come meet me and walk through the unit. The place was spotless. I know how to clean, I took multiple photos and videos and showed his proxy, who is a police officer, the unit. Actually, they are both police officers who used to work together. We both literally tested all the appliances, faucets, checked the blinds, carpets, hardwood, everything. His proxy gave me the okay and said that everything looked great. I gave his proxy the keys and later that night left for my new city. So fast forward to a month later, I have not heard from him about my deposit. He ignored all my emails and phone calls. He finally gets back with me two months after I moved out and has all this ridiculous made up crap about how I damaged his unit. Broken blinds, scratches on the hardwood floor, he made it seem like I damaged his door by getting the lock replaced. He said there were scratches on the outside of his door, rust here and there, broken dishwasher, broken sink, etc. Also he said the oven was broken, the broken dryer, etc. Shake my head, it was all lies. I would never leave a unit in that condition. He sent me an itemized list of all the charges that magically came out to be $1000, which was the same as my deposit. He was always planning to keep my money, he wanted that money to either ball on it or upgrade his condo. I hated him. I decided I was not going to go to court because I had moved to a different state and live alone, but I thought of something. He rented to me under the table and likely did not claim my rent payments as earned income. I had all my wire transfers on my bank statement, I had his routing and account number and a copy of his driver's license as we agreed to swap IDs when I signed the lease to make sure I was not getting scammed. I found his out of state address online, gathered all my bank statements, gathered his bank account numbers and made a report with the IRS. About a few years later I check up on things and that bastard lost his condo and lost everything he owned in bankruptcy. I paid for and downloaded his court records and saw proof that he lost everything including his condo and cars and had his bank accounts seized. I'm not sure if he went to jail or anything, but I'm so glad that karma got him. He stole money from me that I gave him to rent a condo and he ends up losing that same condo to bankruptcy. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.